hey, you need a better webcam. I'm Anil Dash. I'm going to run you through seven popular options for webcams that people can use at work. Uh, and the goal is to get you to upgrade from the default webcam that you've got on your laptop right now to something that actually does justice to your ideas and helps people be able to see you when you're communicating to them. We're going to talk about some of the high-end options for sure, but we're also going to talk about things that regular people might even already have around the house, as well as a look back uh, at some of the cameras that are really popular over past years and why they might not be a great option. We'll talk a little bit about also the importance of making sure the vendor still supports the camera uh, and that the software is going to work with what you've got. What we're not going to do is get into the details of megapixels and uh, bits and bytes and all the sort of uh, nerdy stuff. This is really going to be a practical guide for regular people that just want to put their best foot forward when using a webcam at work. And with that said, let's get to it. A decade ago when I hopped on a Skype with Joe Biden and it was one of his very first video calls that he ever did, the camera I used for that was a Logitech C920. Amazingly, 10 years later, Logitech is still selling basically the same camera. Now they have a lot better models and upgraded uh, designs and things like that, but uh, this is one of those things that you probably have seen around your office by somebody that's got this sitting there And the truth is it is still better than the basic camera that comes with a lot of laptops today uh, But it hasn't advanced very much. It is not very fancy And I'm sure there's all kinds of software you can download from Logitech, but out of the box Not the best camera you've ever seen just simply better than using the default built into your machine So this is the Logitech C920 HD 1080p camera. Now here's one that went from being one of my favorites to one of my least favorites. This is the Razer Kayo, which is now a series of four different cameras, but this was the first one, not the Kayo Pro or HD or Ultra or any of the other models. This is just the regular Kayo. And the truth is it's basically been abandoned on the Mac. I have pretty much only used Mac, so uh, the camera has been kind of worthless to me. I actually had to download some obscure uh, weird open source uh, control panel in order to get this thing to even produce an image that was usable at all. Um, and it's a shame because this used to be one of my favorites. It had a little ring light that's built into it, did a lot of cool autofocus stuff, but it shows just how quickly the space is changing. That you can have something like the Razer Kayo only a couple years ago be cutting edge, top of the line, and nowadays it's pretty much unusable. Um, so you want to have always a mind towards the software being supported for whatever camera you're going to use going forward and ideally not needing software at all. It should just do the right thing, work with your apps, and then if you want to add further customization, you could download some apps, but you don't need them. From that old chestnut of a Logitech camera, we jump to one of the most interesting but notorious webcams around. It's the one that Apple built into its Apple Studio display released in early 2022. Now, when this display first came out, there was a lot of noise and a lot of criticism about the quality of the video that came from the camera. Now, some of this is I think people weren't used to seeing Apple's webcams and displaying video at full screen. They were used to it being tucked in a little window. Uh, and some of it is just that the market has moved on and they had really been comparing to, I think, their old past cameras as opposed to the new uh, state-of-the-art cutting edge cameras. That being said, it's not too bad. They're up to version 17 of their firmware now, which means they've updated it a number of times in the year and a half since the studio display first came out. Uh, and you know, a lot of things like the color aren't too bad. Uh, now the thing about this is it's a fairly expensive display. If you need a nice display and you need one that's got a camera built in, uh, it's an okay choice. I actually think the speakers are the highlight of this display, not so much the camera. Uh, but this is one that's worth looking at, and it has continued to improve. They've added uh, new features ever since it came out, but a lot of them are in the areas like uh, zooming in and following you around and things like that. And I feel like every camera is going to have some version of that if you download the right software or plug the right things into it. So we're looking more at the core image quality than what the software niceties can do around it. And in that case, uh, it's sort of uh, middle of the road. All right, so now you've seen some of the ones that were a little more abandoned or older, like the Logitech from a long time ago or the original Razer Kaya where the software hasn't been kept up to date. But this is more like a daily driver. This is the Elgato face cam, the original model. They since have added a pro on top of this model. Uh, I've been using this for a couple of years. This is the one I use at work every day uh, and it works great. Uh, they do have a pretty good software suite with the uh, uh, software that comes with the Elgato face cam, but you don't even need it. Out of the box, it does the right thing. It looks good. You look sharp. 
Um, and I think the, the results are pretty good. We have some challenging backgrounds here. I've got a lot of light bleeding in from the window. Uh, at work, a lot of times we're underlit uh, where I sit uh, in my office and uh, it just handles it. And so this is the kind of difference that using a real webcam designed to generate a good image can do. Uh, I really strongly recommend, you know, you get one as recent a model as you can, you make sure it's got software for the platform that you're on, but also just out of the box, it should do the right thing. So really, really like this. One of the things that people sometimes ding the Elgato face cam for is it doesn't have a microphone built in. Uh, the truth is it's very rare for the microphone in any one of these cameras to be worth a damn. Uh, if you care about sound, and you should, for the same reasons you should care about your camera, uh, get a simple microphone. It doesn't have to be anything expensive, doesn't have to be anything fancy. Uh, a lot of people really swear by the uh, wired microphone on the Apple uh, earbud, uh, air, earbuds, not AirPods, but the actual reg regular wired earbuds. Uh, those are great. So anything that'll plug in to your computer is going to be a better mic probably than whatever's on your webcam. So uh, look at that. But uh, for image quality, day-to-day -day use, simplicity, uh, really like the Elgato face cam. Another one in a similar vein is the Elgato face cam. An incredible choice is what Apple calls continuity camera. Uh, here I've got an iPhone 14, so uh, not the latest model, but still a very good phone. Uh, and with Apple, if you've got your iPhone logged into the same iCloud account uh, as your desktop computer, you can use that phone as your camera. Uh, even wirelessly, you don't even have to plug it in. Uh, pretty amazing option. Now, I don't do this personally because I use my phone during uh, meetings a lot of times, uh, but it is a really, really good option if you can use it, especially with any recent iPhone, your camera is gonna be a lot better uh, than what you probably have out of the box on your uh, laptop or even most of the commercial webcams on the market because it's just an incredible camera. So really, really strongly uh, suggest checking out this option. Now this is a little bit of a, you know, a software hack. Not every app uh, might work, work with it out of the box, but in terms of number of settings, options, default, camera quality, uh, compatibility with most of your apps, really, really great option. So if you haven't checked it out, Apple continuity camera, any recent iPhone. Now, of course, the challenge is you have to be on a Mac and you have to have an iPhone, uh, but that'll be a lot of folks who care about image quality and care about their webcam quality. So definitely a good option to check out. Uh, and again, uh, you still wanna have a separate microphone uh, to do that, but that's uh, a fine addition to have to uh, how you're using your iPhone. Okay, so we've talked a lot about how webcams need to have the right software, but they also need to have the hardware accommodation of working on your computer, like the uh, mounting bracket. Uh, I like the Elgato one a lot. I think even the old Logitech had a pretty good clip, but um, they can vary a lot. And also it's really hard if you don't have a monitor, like if you're on a laptop. Uh, so that brings me to this device, which is the Opal Tadpole. Now, uh, full disclosure, Opal did send me this Tadpole. It's a brand new webcam from them, and it was a little bit of a prompt for me to start going through this video. Um, but it goes to the broader subject, which is why would you add a camera to a laptop that already has one? And nearly all laptops have webcams these days. And it really is about quality, right? It just is about picking a camera that is better than what you have out of the box. And for that reason, I really like something like this Tadpole, which is a new product, or even that Apple Continuity Cam, which is an iPhone that you're likely to have in your pocket. In either case, it's a better camera than your laptop has built in, and oftentimes lets you get to a better angle. Uh, this uh, Tadpole has a clip uh, that you'll see in the uh, unboxing uh, overlay that I'll show you here. Uh, but also, uh, you know, the Apple uh, Continuity Cam is an iPhone that you can kind of position anywhere. And that's a really big thing that it's not just your laptop lid that's aimed up your nose while you're trying to talk to somebody or something like that. Um, so, you know, this really speaks to that point about the value of uh, having a, a good camera for your calls. Um, I really like what Opal's done with the Tadpole, but what you'll see with this and with the next camera, which is also from Opal, um, a lot of it does hinge on software. Uh, Opal's been a, lot, a little uneven uh, in their updates to their software, leaving some people frustrated. Um, and in particular, uh, the next camera, the, the, the other Opal camera that I'll show you, uh, had some overheating issues because of uh, really in a lot of ways, poor software management or inexperience in hardware design. Now, I think this camera that you're looking at right now, the Tadpole is not gonna have that issue. It's a very simple camera, uh, clips on top of your laptop. Uh, so it might be a much better fit for what you're trying to do. But I actually like seeing some innovation in the market that is about one, recognizing the fact that we're all on laptops all day. Very few people these days are sitting at a desktop uh, all day or solely. Uh, and two, being able to take it with you so that you know, you're on the go and you're doing what you're doing, whether it's working from a cafe or 
uh, you know, a hotel room or whatever it is. So um, this is the Opal Tadpole. Really like this as a brand new entrant in the space. Uh, and again, I think it takes its place alongside something like Apple Continuity Camera as like, just don't use your default laptop camera. Okay, and then there's my current favorite webcam, the one I use at home on my favorite computer, which is the Opal C1 camera. And this is one that I did uh, by myself. The, the Tadpole is the only one that was sent to me. Um, and, you know, it's something that uh, I really like. I feel like it's a good uh, camera for presenting. It's definitely one that I like to do if I'm doing, you know, online events and things like that. Uh, to put my best foot forward, it's very forgiving of light. Um, and, you know, I'd say, like I said before, with the Opal Tadpole camera, the software has been a little up and down. I think it's sort of headed to a good place where it is. There are definitely people who have had a harder time of it. Uh, I've heard a, a number of people report that their Opal C1 camera overheats uh, or has heating issues. And sometimes it's related to what the software is doing. Uh, so I think that's something to be aware of, especially because it was the first hardware product from the company. So you'd expect some bugs to shake out and it seems like they did. But for me, it's been nothing but positive. I think it looks good, works really well. Um, is, is noticeably sharper uh, than, than the other options that are out there. But again, I think if you're looking at something, it's quite expensive. You know, I, I think it's not anywhere near as cheap as uh, some of the other options. So I think uh, the Tadpole, if you want to stick with an Opal camera, is, is a lot uh, less expensive. But also definitely looking at the Apple continuity camera. That to me seems to be one of the great picks. And that's the real key takeaway here, which is like, invest a little bit of time, as little money as you can get away with, but be intentional about the image that you're putting forward. And look, I'll tell you the truth. I have been uh, on the board of multi-billion dollar companies. I have been in, you know, uh, high stakes conversations about, you know, really meaningful work out in the world that was happening over Zoom. And the truth is you don't want to leave it to chance as to whether people are gonna be able to see you and to hear you. Now the hear piece is about, um, microphones and we'll definitely have a conversation about that in the future but the first part is you have to look like you are there and you're present and you know it's basic stuff too get the lighting right get the angles right look at how you look before you jump on the call it's shocking to me how often people have really good thoughtful points that they put a lot of time and energy into and then you see like i said the laptop camera where they look like a thumbprint or you're looking up their nose or uh they're they're in silhouette um, and you know, it's just selling the message short because there are lots and lots of people that don't know what the hell they're talking about that are putting out really beautiful camera images uh, or spending a lot of time making their slides look great in that presentation. And you are not gonna convince the, the fools and the people who don't know what they're doing to make their image look worse. So you might as well step up your game if you've got a good story to tell. So um, this is a quick glimpse at uh, a couple of popular web cameras, a little bit of a glimpse over the last 10 years of uh, where the quality has been. Uh, do yourself a favor, take a look at the images, see what you like, uh, compare it to what you've got now. And if you don't have at least that level of standard or you're still using the standard camera that came with your laptop, um, upgrade a little bit, it'll be worth it. Uh, and hopefully this has been helpful to you. Thanks a lot.